next speaker for you guys is Matty Cohen, who some of you may know already. He's quite, quite a well-known uh, WordPress dev. He's Chief Product Officer at WooThemes, which is quite a stressful job, I imagine. You're overseeing every single product WooThemes put out. He's, uh, he's also interested in music, right? He's uh, so passionate, so. passionate about music. Oh, good. Oh, so am I. Nice one, Matt. Is that, is that the best you can do? Mm. Rob was also a musician. Oh, there we go. Before Matt. Oh, I played in a band called Man in Suit. Didn't know that, did you? Oh, no, you do. Take that to the bank. Oh. Yeah. Good. You never knew you'd be getting tidbits like that when you signed up, you know? You think, oh. And I found out that two guys, you know, interested in music. That's uncommon for people to be interested in music. <laughs> yeah, well, Sorry, I think we're having a little bit of a domestic fight here. We, we'll take it outside. It's all because of the, the robust back end. Anyways, so. Matt has also uh, been a, an integral part of helping to organize today as well. And he's going to chat to you today about adding sustainable value to WordPress products. So please put both of your hands together. That's right, both of them. Hope you'll, you'll wait a minute there. Let, wait, I want to I try something right now. I don't want you to give Matt a round of applause. I want you guys to just clap once. Just one clap. Do it, Nick. Can you show them how to do it? Okay, I'm going to have to do this. Don't look at it, it's not rude. Can you guys do that for me? That's how you're going to welcome Matt to the stage. Are you ready? I'll count to three, and I want a one singular clap from all 500 people here. Is that cool? Yeah. That's you, guys, you, guys, you guys don't sound excited, but trust me, we're going to tell our grandchildren about this one day. All right. Please, Okay, I'm going to say, please welcome to the stage, man. Okay? And count to three. No, we're not going to count. They're just going to use, they're going to be intuitive with us. We're going to just trust they're going to be on our wavelength. And you're going to go, please welcome to the stage. All right. And you're going to do it at the right time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Matty Cohen. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can applaud only now. Hey, okay. So this is the guy. All right. Um... Okay, cool. So you guys can see right here, basically just a quick note, anything in blue, that's the important stuff really. So pretty much this, what we're talking about today is value. Okay, and everything in blue is a value right there. So to sum it all up, I'm going to do something a little different and just do the summary right at the very beginning. And say value is true and sustainable. Right, so if you leave with one thing today, you have to tweet that. If it's true and it's sustainable. If it's not true and it's not sustainable, it's not really valuable. Um, it's really awesome to be back at WordCamp in Cape Town. Um, just before we kick things off, just by show of hands, just raise them really high and just be totally honest. How much of you guys are designers, like graphic designers, web designers? Oh wow, okay, quite a big chunk. Um, developers? Oh, even bigger, that's cool. Um, we're not going to get too technical, but it's cool to know we can. Um, assemblers? All right, so guys who like see product and kind of piece it together and make something really cool like with a plug in and a theme and just kind of put it together not really doing code or design but literally just piecing everything together yeah. okay. cool. and you know guys who are running businesses but using like using other guys to to do the actual labor <laughs> <laughs> okay. cool. so it's nice just to get a rough picture of, of what, what the audience looks like So I was asking earlier, so I, I left out end users. Okay, how many guys are, are end users? Just, you know, you guys use WordPress, piece everything together, but don't actually code or assemble. Mag, right? <laughs> um, sorry, I just had to put the better business in blue, just personally. <laughs> so I can do, um, I'm a dev. And yeah, like I said today, we're talking about value, but very much from the product perspective. So Rob spoke a lot about value in terms of adding value to your customer experience and just really helping customers. You know, that, that really falls into product as well. It's not just about coding, it's not just about shipping. You know, it's, it's about everything really. Um, but what is value? You know, is value uh, how many features you have? Is it how much the product costs? Or is it how much, like, how many theme options you have? Or, so I'm going to pick on WordPress themes quite a little bit in the talk just because they have such a, a brilliant example of, of value in all the different ways. So but what is value? You know, I'll put it at the top there, the perception of value. It is really how you perceive it, but what is it really? So for me, features aren't value. Okay? So if you go and buy a product and it says, oh, you've got five different slider options and you can change this color and that color, 
Well, you could do that anyway, but why do you need it as a feature? Um, this is pretty much the summary of, of what I'm getting at here. I had a really, this is a really great topic point, which I heard from NetProfit, I think it was 2011. Uh, Mike Stockholf, I'll give him all the credit for this, because it's just so true. You know, you go and over the years, this is what, you know, this is probably a pretty advanced fax machine for what you think. Okay, I'm going fax machines, it's not WordPress, it's not code, but just bear with me for a minute. Okay, so back in the day, it's a fax machine, you know, it's the one thing that came after the telephone, you know, so you can send paper through. Wow, great. But all of a sudden, now you can copy and you can scan and you can email and you can... What's going on there? Okay. Um, When you buy a printer nowadays, or a fax machine, or, or anything of that sort, they basically tell you, if it's gone, it's gone. You know, just buy a new one, because there's no point repairing it. But that's because of all the other rubbish they had in it. So why do you need the fax machine to scan things? I mean, you can just fax them, that's what it does. You take the paper and just take it in. You don't need it to, you don't need it to scan anything, or make copies, or anything like that. That's what's really important. Can the thing do what it says in the box? You know, it's called a fax machine. Can it actually send a fax? Who knows? But this is a topic that's come up quite a lot in, in WordPress. I think this is a Ruby saying, I don't know, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe. Um, decisions over options. So I'm just I'm picking on Catalyst theme a little bit here, but this is just one of the many screens in their theme options panel. And that's pretty confusing. I, mean, I wouldn't want to use anything like that at all. And it just means just make a decision. So can they change the link color themselves? Yes, they can. Great. We don't need to add an option for that. Or which slider are you going to use? Well, you know, flex slider, of course. So you just choo you choose one and you stick with it. You say, that's what we're using. Done. Um, just decisions over options. And Rob actually summed that up perfectly. I didn't change my slides, I promise. I literally wrote that and I was like, don't waste your time. You know, don't. Whether it's a UX thing, whether it's code, whether it's an option. Just don't, don't waste people's time. Just respect them. You know, respect the customer. And I tweeted about it as well in terms of UX. I mean, I'm no designer, I'm no UX guy. But if your user experience isn't important to you, you're wasting your customer's time. And that's just disrespectful. You know, stop disrespecting people. It's, it's not good. I'm trying to be quite accusatory here, but just don't. You know, it's not a good thing. And, you know, ask the right questions. So, when you're talking about a product, when you're looking at a product, if you're going and looking, let's say you're on Theme Forest and you're browsing the catalog and you say, there's one theme and it says, oh, five sliders, great. But the content display is terrible. Then, is it really doing what it's supposed to be doing? Is there any value there? Probably not. Because themes are meant to display your content. And that's what they should be doing. They'll do it, they must do it really well. And if they don't do it really well, it's not really a thing. It shouldn't be there. Um, it's quite a harsh statement, it's quite a big one. We'll let that soak in, but <laughs> it's the truth. You know, if your theme doesn't display well, then it should be there. By the same token, does your e-commerce the plugin actually help your visitors to purchase product? If it doesn't help them, then it's not really an e-commerce plugin, it's just a bunch of code doing something. You know, it's, it's about investing the time, really. And people get into this thing of saying, Okay, I have this plugin that I sell, and it's doing really well. So, let's take, my, take an e-commerce plugin. There's a big e-commerce boom at the moment. And you could say, we have an e-commerce plugin. It's really cool. But let's use that success and just bake in a whole bunch of extra features like form generator and, you know, I don't know, the shop styler or change the text of these buttons or, you know, silly things you'd never really need in a plugin. And you kind of end up with a bit of this. You know, and it's just, this happens every day. It's not even a joke. You can't, you, can't, you can't make this stuff up. You know, it, it happens every day. And people go, you know, hey, I, I put some features in your features so you can sell more features. And it's just, what's the point? Because where's the value? You know, because really, feature-based selling is just it's so 2002. You know, like, we don't do that anymore. You know, you sell on, on value. But we keep coming back to this concept of value. And what is it? Is it features? No, okay, we decided. I, I personally decided it's not features, but Feel free to correct me, I'll, I'll tell you you're wrong. 
Um, we can discuss it later. This is all. This is all a discussion point. It's all about questions, really. I'm posing a few things. I'm posing a few thoughts. You know, this is really the beginning of a discussion. But is it money? No, money is not. Sorry, the exclamation mark equals for the non-devs in the audience is not. It's not. It's not. So, <laughs> it's not that. So if, this is the real question. If you pay, how much? Pro, how much value? Does a $99 product really offer you? You know, you can't look at the price tag and say, oh, okay, so $99, all right. So I get $99 of value out of it. Well, no, you don't, because if you don't know how to use the product, you're getting zero value. You're in fact losing money and losing value because you don't know what you're doing with the product to begin with. If the product bundles in 100 features and you only need one, how much value are you really getting? not really the same. Still not 99. But here's a real question. So what if 2010 was the only thing? And that was it. That was the only thing. Sorry, that's 2011 over there. But the, the same logic applies. What, what if 2011 was the only thing? You know, it's, it's a quite a crazy thing to think about, given the theming is such a, you know, people say that themes are a commodity. And in their current state, yes. We'll leave it at that for now. But what if it was your only thing? You had no choice, no options, no decision. That was it, done. And what if it cost you money? And you had to use it. They said you had no choice. You said, they said, if you use WordPress, you have to use this thing. It's uh, a little bit, you know, it's a little bit crazy. Um, just, you know, soak that in for a minute. Like, I mean, being in the business of selling themes, it's, uh, it's quite a daunting thing to think about, really. But what if, if that was it? How much more valuable is that product to you? You know, if you literally have no choice but to use it. But let's say the price was, I don't know, I'll just stump so I can figure like $1,000. So it would probably be $999, you know, all the marketing people. But let's say it was $1,000. And <laughs> the value proposition changes a lot there. You know, when you're saying, I'm paying this much, but it's the only thing ever, and I have to use it. Maybe let's say you didn't have to use it. You still you get a lot of value out of that just by using it because it's the only thing available to you. So ultimately, we've been discussing value. As I've said, I've probably said value. It's a, it's a really terrible drinking game. How many times has Maddie said value? You know, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's ending for them. But we never really define what it is. So this is the dictionary definition. Obviously, there's other definitions in terms of what is value in terms of price. But this is the one that really struck out for me was, it's the relative worth, merit, or importance. So. Value is, is really the crux of what we, what we do every day. How much value are we adding? You know, when you build a product and you offer a service, if you do client work, how much value are you adding? It's not about the features you do. It's, it's actually more about the features you take away. Um, you know, Rob, I mean, you, you guys will probably, probably start eventually getting to a point where the, the screen becomes a little bit crazy, you know? Um, maybe. Maybe it's a case of taking stuff away. Maybe it's a case of adding more things and shifting things around. It's all about value. You know, if you, you know, everyone's been talking about advertising, and that's really the advertising in your blog is, is actually a great example of this. It's like, how much value do those ads really give you? Probably not that much because people are looking for your content. Just a thought on that. But, you know, like I said, now this is this is really the beginning of a discussion. It's not. There's no hard and fast answers or rules or saying, if you do this, you will get this result. But just a few little things. So your product should do what it says it does. Brilliant, right? So, I mean, Gravity Forms is an excellent example of this. What is Gravity Forms? It builds forms. Great, what kind of forms? Anything, anything you want. You know, can it build a booking form? Yes, it can. Can it build a submission form? Yes, it can. Can it contact people and send an email to three other people when I submit the form? Of course it can, because it's a form plugin. That's all it does. You know, and if you ask, Carl, he doesn't even talk about it as a plugin, he talks about it as a platform and an application. Because that's that's what they do. You know, their competitors in his mind are Wufu and you know Survey Monkey and those guys, the real big guys, because they also do the same thing, they just build forms. That's all they do. Because it, it really is what it is. What does WooCommerce do? It helps you sell things. Uh, can I uh, can I sell shoes? Yes. Can I sell buckets of of whatever? Yes, of course you can. Because it's it's selling stuff. That's all it really is. 
Um, just to jump to theming, just briefly. So I've, I made this point earlier, and it's so important. Purely, I'm just jumping on theming because it's such a, a big market right now. If your theme doesn't display content and it doesn't look great, take it down, really. Because that is what a theme should be doing. It shouldn't have five custom post types in it or anything like that because that's not valuable. People don't buy a theme because it has all these features. Oh, so people shouldn't buy a theme because it has all these features. They should buy a theme because it looks nice. It looks great. It's pretty. You know, it's the design of stuff. It's all fluffy. It's nice. Do that. You know? Ultimately, there's another side to that as well. So if you're building a product, building a theme, and your market is SEO, you know, basically talking to the Genesis people, um, if that's your market, then your theme must be SEO friendly. So there's another side to it. That doesn't mean adding SEO options to your theme. It means making sure the code is solid, making sure that the design is adaptable to current trends and what people look for in the site. Like, for example, logo top left is a, is a pretty common option. Navigation just below that, maybe a banner ad next to the logo. If your theme can't adapt and do that, you're not really adding value. Just a little bit of thought there. I mean, a lot of what I'm saying is, is pretty obvious. But it's something we need to keep remembering because we tend to go through these loops. I mean, Chris mentioned it brilliantly in press, at Pressnomics. You start right here and then you go up and you you hit this peak where you say, okay, I know exactly what I'm doing, I've got everything, and you, you know you think you know what you're doing, but then you've got to force yourself to get back down again and say, okay, I'm doing something different now. I need to relearn and just keep climbing that slope again. And we've been doing this for years. You know, WordPress we said. You know, Kubrick came out and it was clean and simple and plain, you know, no options. Purely decisions. Some not great decisions, but purely decisions. And then you said, okay, what about options? You know, premium market is pretty guilty of this, to be honest. Um, you know, we go, okay, so themes, options, features, let's add it. The more options we have, the more we can sell. And that worked great because people go, okay, it's in one package. All I need is the one product and I can do everything I want. But at the same time, it's not very sustainable. So it's true value because you're giving people what they want. But at the same time, it's not a very sustainable model. So we've started this trend now of building out small, simple plugins to do one thing. So you know, if you look at a plugin like Woo Slider, so I'm talking about Woo stuff because I'm heavily involved in that every day. Woo Slider does one thing. You know, if, if you ask me. When you started coding that, what does it do? I said it slides stuff. What does it slide? I really don't care what it slides, to be honest. Um, as long as it slides, I'm happy because that's what it's meant to do. Um, if you're talking about our testimonials plugin, a little free testimonials plugin, we don't we don't call it Woo Themes Testimonials Super Awesome Plugin. It's just called Testimonials because that's all it does. It doesn't have to do anything special. All it has to do is the one job. You know, and that's where the true sustainable value is. Because then you can say, there's a problem with this, with this website. You know, we can maybe get a support ticket or something, and it says, there's a problem with the website. Well, where's the problem? Oh, it's the testimonial section, okay? We know where to look now. It's in the testimonials button because it does one thing, and that's it. So your value is there, your value is true, and your value is sustainable. You know, your themes, as long as you stick with a theme and you say, this theme looks really cool, and the content is displayed really well, then you can go, okay, so on this theme, let's add some support for styling of the testimonials plugin. If you have both products active at the same time, both of them get more valuable. It's quite simple, really. Just going quickly back, I don't have a slide for it, but the fax machine example. It's not just about the bloat that's been coming around with the fax machine. So when fax machines came out, right, so there's a, it's a pretty weird thing to think about for a minute, but if you have a fax machine, on its own, just right there on the table. How valuable is it? Not very valuable. Why? Because there's only one. What if you have one fax machine? What can you do with it? Nothing. Because you can't fax anybody. So you kind of got to have another one to do anything with it. But at the same time, what happens to the value when you have two? All of a sudden, each becomes far more valuable because now they can talk to each other. They've got friends. You know? Whereas if you've only got one, can't really do anything, so it can't actually do its job. And it's just something to think about, that every time you add another piece to the puzzle, each other piece becomes more valuable. So if you have three fax machines, the value is exponential. The same goes with the WordPress site. 
you've got a WordPress site, which is one platform. So you've got a theme, but then you can have any number of plugins you like. So all of a sudden, every plugin you start adding, so you can go, okay, I've got Canvas, great, or 2011, 2010, or Genesis, or anything. And you say, okay, perfect, it's there. Then I have a testimonials plugin. Okay, cool, now my theme can display testimonials on my website. Brilliant. Um, and when I activate the theme and the plugin together, it looks great because the theme styles my plugin. Pretty valuable. But what if I want to receive testimonials? We get this question all the time. Well, it's not what the plugin does, it just displays them. So perhaps try using Gravity Forms. And then you hook Gravity Forms in there, all of a sudden everything becomes far more valuable. You know, and you've got your theme which styles Gravity Forms. You've got your theme which styles the testimonials plugin, and then you've got Gravity Forms and the testimonials plugin working together to get you the result. So that, that's real value right there, you know. And that's kind of what I've been rambling on about for the last five minutes is, is adding support for the products your customers actually use. You know, so if you've got guys who use Ninja Forms instead of Gravity Forms, just style out the form. You know, it's, it's a small job for you to do, but you're adding real value. Like just talking to people, like Rob was saying, talk to the customer. You know, listen to them, uh, listen to what they're saying because ultimately they're the ones actually using the product and using your service. So back yourself and say, no, this is what I believe. You know, if you have to, do that. But in theory, everyone should be buying into the same concept of what you're doing because you're listening to them, they're listening to you, everyone's working together. It's, it's a happy environment. And at the same time, also, just don't be afraid to recommend something you didn't create. So I'm mean, standing up here talking about gravity forms, and everyone else is doing the same. And it's true, because we didn't create gravity forms. So what? It's a great product. Use it. You know, it's, it doesn't matter who built it, as long as it's adding the right kind of value. And if you buy into what they're doing, that's what really counts. And by the same token, don't try to do it all. You know, there's, there's no need to jump in and say, I'm going to do this. You know, if, if I spent a day building a form generator plugin for an hour or however long it takes, it's nowhere near as valuable as the journey that somebody else is already taking. So I could go and look at Ninja Forms and say, okay, Ninja Forms is available on GitHub, it's available on WordPress.org, I can contribute back to that and say, let's add more value to that because you guys have already gone on this journey, so let's keep going. There's no need for everybody to do everything all the time because then you just flood the market. So leave the kitchen sink in the kitchen, pretty much. And you know we spoke about true value. So true value is products working together in harmony to enhance the experience for everybody. Okay, so harmony just feels like the right word for me with that. It's if you add stuff to your site, everything else should just get better. And that's where the real value comes in. When you guys start saying, I'm going to take my listing in the plugins section in the back end, you know, where you guys go and activate all the plugins, and they make their, their bar green, you know, and they, or they, they customize the look and feel of their, uh, their section of that screen, it's not really doing anything. You know, it's just invading the whole system. So this kind of trickles throughout everything, through the UI, through your, the way that your code is constructed, through the way it interacts with everything. It's all about harmony. You know, so you're plugging into a system like WordPress already, there's a style guide. There's ways and means of doing things. Use that stuff. You know, do it. Split everything across what you want to do. So if you have a couple of things you want to do, so testimonials is a good example. So you have you want to display testimonials, you want to receive testimonials, and you want to send testimonials, for example, to Facebook. That's three different things. So make three different plugins. Not everybody wants to do all three. So make sure that everything works together. But at the same time, it's nice and separate and easy to digest for people when they want to use it. And ultimately, yeah, just keep it clean and just really consider where the value is. I mean, this trickles through everything. When you're looking for a product, you know, if you look at a, a theme and it says $39, five sliders, uh, 150 theme options, uh, look somewhere else. <laughs> it's, it's the, the summary of, of that. But yeah, just really consider what you're actually getting at the end of the day. Is that valuable? Is it valuable to you? Is it valuable to the customer? You know, I've been having a few conversations today and you know, you say, you tell people that and they go, you know, I'm new to WordPress and I don't really know 
what all the options are. So I'm going to go for that one because it's a good price, it's a small investment to make, and it's got all these options. And I can reuse the same product over and over again and just change the options. Great, but is that sustainable? Probably not. Um, yeah, just a bit of food for thought, really. Uh, if you guys want to continue the conversation, find me anywhere, or um, you know, give me my Twitter handle at some point in this presentation. And yeah, we'll, we'll make a plan and have a little chat. Cool, thanks. Thanks, Matt. What is your favorite band of all time? Not UB40, is it? Hogs, eh? Hoggity hog, local, I like it. Any questions for Matt? There you go. Four, two, okay. You first, sir. How many theme options How many theme options does Canvas have? Simple answer, too many. <laughs> I thought he said Candace. Candace? <laughs> 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 Someone here called Candace who's just giving away themes. You know that one a little better than I do. Uh, Candace, if you are like, please stop what you're doing. <laughs> All right. Any, uh, there were a couple other questions? Um, I'd like to go to a two-part question. Um, first one is, your flagship theme is Candace. Is it intended more for end users? Can you tell me? I don't know. Can we guess the benefits as a framework? To me, Canvas is for everybody at this stage. We're experimenting with a few different tweaks and ideas for, for ways to, to refine, to, to basically to answer your question. Um, because, you know, it really is for everybody. And at the same time, you know, moving theme options and things into a plugin is something I'm really keen to do. And it's just a slow process, purely because of, of legacy. You know, you've got, you've got everybody from a really savvy developer to like someone who's trying to start up their second career as like a part-time blogger, you know, who, I don't know, like something like Sunset Blogs or something like that, and they blog the sunset every day, and the photos of the sunset. And you've got really like all levels of, of user. So any move we make with a product like Canvas, is, it's got to be really well thought through and a really slow move. Uh, and what is your second part? Yeah, so that was really the question. Is once we find out a little bit more about who's actually using Canvas, that, that's the, the values in the data for us. So actually just finding out who's using the product is, is really the key. And people don't realize it, but once you, once you buy a WordPress theme, you download it and it's left our hands. You know, we've got no way of seeing you or anything like that. We don't track anybody. We're pretty honest and upfront about that. So there's just no way of really finding out in a quick way how people are using the product. So it's quite a drawn out process. But we'll, we're definitely looking into it. Thank you, the handsome gentleman standing up in the back there. Mr. Perrault. Andy, how are you? Thank you, good. Um, my question, hi, uh, David from Obox. My question is, um, I'm sure you know this, when someone buys a theme and they install it, they get a blank white page up front. Uh, so if they look at your demo, they see there's a slider, they see there's testimonials, they see that there's, that you can sell products. <laughs> Um, they install the theme, they pay $99 for it, so the theme value is that all these things are built in. And they then get told, oh no, sorry, the slider is not actually included, oh no, sorry, testimonials is not included. So where's the value in the $99 if they then have to go to a, another website and download those, those plugins? Is that not a fragmented way of selling product? Um, that's a good question. I would say no. I would say no. No, it's not, because you know, back yourself, you know. Um, no, it's not, because ultimately what we're doing is we're saying to you guys, you know, here, here's the product, it does what it does, it's a theme. It's not meant to do testimonials, it's not meant to do any of that stuff. It's meant to offer you a design and enhance the design for elements that you want. So if you don't need testimonials, great, it hides the testimonials, you don't actually have to worry about that, because it's not, a, it's not built into the theme. And what happens when you have to update that theme? Then you're stuck updating 100 themes, with the same code over and over again, and you could just do it in a plugin. Um, it's all down to education and user experience. So if you, I mean, we don't get a, just to clarify, you don't get a blank white page when you install Canvas. You literally just get a theme with Hello World and a sample page, uh, which is a good thing because that's what you start with. And it's important to everybody just to educate themselves and 
and to grow. And we provide you know, documentation. We try to enhance the setup process as much as possible. So for example, if you activate Canvas, you get straight to the theme options screen. You don't want to waste anybody's time. You go in there, you set that up, you're done. Um, if you want testimonials, there's a link right in there to download testimonials. Uh, in future, it will probably direct download into your installation as well. So just a little sneak peek there of what I haven't coded yet, but I will. Um, and yeah, I think it's about education and just the experience. I mean, it doesn't really matter where the products are. If you download, okay, I'm going to say a curse word now, if you download Jetpack, okay, and, and what are you actually downloading? Not really much. But at the same time, the experience is quite familiar. So if you want infinite scroll, great, you click a button. It's the same exact process. You, know, you don't notice anything different, but you only get the modules that you actually need. So I suppose that same logic applies to theme. Cool, thanks, Matt. Uh, any other questions from the... Ah, yes. Uh, a client or uh, a, uh, a, a purchaser of one of your themes. How do you educate them <coughs> that sometimes more options are actually less? Um, okay, so you're saying for a person like a pre-sales question at work. Yeah. Um, okay, that's really Maria's thing. But I will. <laughs> I'll try and answer my best. And Maria can interrupt me if she if she says I'm going down the wrong path. Um, look, it's all about just talking to them, saying what do you actually need. You know, uh, something you know we've discussed quite a lot between you and I is also like speaking to the customer and saying, "What is your product?" You know, if it's a store, do you need catalog visibility options? No, because you don't want to hide the button. You want them to buy stuff. You know, so it's it's about just talking to them. Saying, do you need a Romanian payment gateway? Well, no, because you're in the states. You know, you don't need people from Romania unless and you know, and then at the same time telling them, "Look, this is an ongoing process. Your website lives." So if you find you're getting a lot of people buying from Romania or India or Yugoslavia, anywhere really, um, just say to them, well look, you know, analyze your data and here's a couple of options you may need. But just yeah, discourage, obviously you want them to make lots of purchases, but at the same time it's more important to have that long term and say let's build a relationship together. So for now this is what you need, but by the way, here's a whole bunch of other options you can use if you need them. So talking, essentially, talking to the customer. Cool, anyone else? Okay, um, thanks very much again, Matt. Another round of applause for Matco. You can find him on Twitter at Matty Z-A, M-A-T-T-Y, and his website is matty.co.za.